Grinders Poker Ringer here with the NL2 challenge. Guys, it is still not going well. Our yellow line's still up here, our green line's still way down here. So we're down 14 to 15 buy ins. I want to show you, I just reached out to the legend himself, Charlie Carroll. Those of you who don't know him, he's an online crusher. He just did the masterclass. Uh, he just uh, had a course called the masterclass. Uh, he's probably the best channel to watch for Zoom Poker on uh, YouTube and to learn from. I just sent him today my graphs and I said, hey bro, big fan, can you tell me if I'm running bad or am I just a bad player? I'm shocked I'm not beating NL2 after 30k hands. He asked if I bought his masterclass. I said, by looking at this, what do you think? He said pretty much he's not gonna give advice um, over Twitter, but he recommends me buying his course for 250. I said, can you at least tell me that I suck? He said, you're probably not playing well, but there are usually two to five things you can uh, do very quickly to change you and make you winning consistently. Preflop is the big one usually. I think I think he's already uh, correct in that. Um, I said, this is where it's get interesting why I kind of want to tell you guys this. I said, sweet, man. I said, I would buy your masterclass uh, content. The problem is I'm just, I'm not reading it word for word here. I said, it's 10 hours, a little too long. Full-time gr grinders, I get it. Married man with kids and a full-time job. It's hard to get that time. He says he appreciates the, he appreciates that. Doing it was difficult for him. I don't have as much free time as I did when I grinded. Well, hopefully the free content on YouTube helps. So this is where I wrote that I think this is where a lot of people stand. I said, it helps huge, bro. And I know the masterclass is worth every cent. And I get you can't teach a certain level in poker in just one hour. The course is 10 hours for a reason. Just thought I'm not the only one who would buy a shorter version um, on order to talk to you. Um, and I, I do believe that. I think um, I don't think it's so much the price. We'll get playing here. I'm in two, two tables right now, NL2. Table two on the right, table one on the left. I don't think the 250 is a price that scares people. Um, for some people, I've, we all have different budgets. Uh, I don't mind investing 250 bucks to get a guy like him to teach me. It's investing the 10 hours that it would take to watch the video that I won't be able to do it all in one day. Um, that I could probably fold there. Um, but then also to retain it all, to practice it, like uh, it, it's a lot. Like. Um, if he had like the real important stuff, gave us his hand ranges for for each spot, um, what he calls three bets with, um, you know, all those kind of things. You can you can kind of watch from his bet sizing and all that from his videos, uh, and you can learn the hand ranges, you know, for the most part. But um, I just think if he offered like a one a one hour course for ninety nine dollars, and then tell people like guys, this is just a real quick one hour course for people who don't have time. Uh, I offer a master class for the people who really want to fine tune their game, but for those who are looking for a quick fix, here here's like you know some uh, you know, some tips. Like uh, I think a lot of people would watch that, but so it's pretty cool to have a legend talk to him uh, to talk to. And guys, I, I've always told you guys that's what's so cool about the poker community through Twitter and social media. I've talked to so many uh, famous poker players like it is crazy how reachable poker players are he's 10 suited we're gonna raise up could have probably folded this too i just played chess from a um a, a guy on the channel here uh, talks in the comments i forget his name his chess name's uh P man 123 or something um, really nice guys in the comments um, he'll comment here but he just absolutely destroys me in chess we've played uh, five minute games we've played three minute games two minute games speed games I haven't beat him in one game he's an absolute beast and uh, seems like a solid poker player too so overall talented talented dude uh, the chess you know I, know I know you guys I even just asked him now I said uh, do you think people would like uh, a chess chess videos and and he's true guys like I get it man this is a poker channel you guys found me for poker um, I just wanted to play chess one night and I was like you know maybe there's a couple of you guys who'd want to watch it but uh, I, I'm a poker fan too man I got pretty annoyed when I'd watch like Kevin Martin and these guys are in twitch 
And then um, out of nowhere, one night they're playing video games. And like even Doug Polt, he's like playing Fortnite tonight. And I'm like, buddy, like I watch you to learn poker. Uh, no, that's actually a fold. I watch you to play poker. I don't watch you to play video games. So I fully get the guys who didn't want to watch me play chess, especially that I'm not a good chess player. Like uh, I, I understand, but I also thought maybe some some of you guys just want to see what I'm into. And I got a couple of good comments. A couple of you guys are chess players, but. I think the majority of people um, wouldn't want to um, watch me play chess. I could start like another channel, chess channel, but to be honest, I'm already finding this NL2 to be a grind, and uh, I keep telling you guys every week I'm about to get busier at work. Um, it is coming in soon. The ice is melting fast, so um, this NL2 challenge is taking way longer than I ever, ever thought, and the fact that we're down money is just baffling, but... It is what it is at this point. Uh, maybe I should have called if I called that turn. I just can't believe all these spots, they don't feel like NL2. They all feel like... The skill level doesn't seem difference between this and L5 and L10. You get the, you know, every couple hundred hands you'll get the crazy donkey, but it, it is so far few between. It used to be all the time. And now all these spots are just standard. Like people aren't that bad no more. Like it, it truly is crazy. Like this guy's gonna have it. I'm gonna call. Blind versus blind here is triple bearing, spade draw missed. Over pop bet. That's just crazy. Does he put me on a draw? Probably not. If he put me on a draw, he wouldn't bet that hard. Looks like I'd be folding anyways. Guys, in rake, we've paid like just under $60 so far in NL2 rake. Which to me is ridiculous for 30,000 hands. Five X open. A little curious what that is. A seven. For the you guys who don't understand this graph, the yellow line is your EV, meaning that if there isn't any luck, that's what you should be doing. But the fact that I'm, ju I'm just a slight winner, I'm supposed to be up, you know, we were just supposed to be up $25. The high point was, you know, whatever, maybe $38, $40. Um, that's variance. Um, so that's poker. It should, over time, over 100,000 hands, 200,000 hands, that should, that should uh, the yellow and green line will meet. It's just very strange that usually the, the lines will change and we've been under it the entire time. Um, you know, the very starting first 3,000 hands was pretty consistent and then we haven't been able to catch this yellow line at all. And now we have the biggest gap. So um, we're obviously running bad when we're getting in and good, but it also means when I'm getting in bad, um, you're never seeing me have that big green spike that I'm getting lucky. Like um, when I have ace king all in versus like a pocket pair, I haven't been catching because you'd, you'd see that green line constantly try to get close to, to that yellow line. But I can't win when I'm getting in good and I can't win when I'm getting it in bad. And when I'm getting it bad, it, it doesn't mean it's always spots I'm playing bad. It could be just coolers or spots they don't necessarily have to have it. Um, you know, I'm, go I'm going all in with like two over cards and a flush draw. They're like a 2% favorite, um, stuff like that. And I'm just, I'm not getting there. 
but uh, I don't mind when that happens in like the short sample size. But when it's when it's this big of a sample size, it's pretty pretty it's pretty annoying. It might be bugging me more because I thought I'd steamroll NL2. It's uh, definitely not how I would I would have bet someone if someone wanted to bet me a hundred dollars, um, what I would be at after thirty thousand hands. Um, I might have lost the bet because I would have, I would have went probably too too high, but I, I definitely wouldn't have guessed being I would have I would have probably gave someone ten to one odds that I'd have uh, above money in my account um, after that sample. Actually, I probably should have barreled that queen. It's a bad card for me to check it. I don't know if I should go for a check raise here, but I feel like I'm going to. Or deep stack here. I don't like how I played that hand on table one. Uh, then I just kind of went with it. I didn't want to give up. So these kind of hands I've been calling off, and they have like ace nine in these spots, and I'm just I'm never winning. So let's see if we have a flip. So ace ten, we're 53% favorite. Let's hold four. No heart. Nice. We did win a slight flip, but you know, as you guys know, the challenge just has not been going that way. Taking those little small marginal chances um, haven't been working out for us. Yeah, guys, so time-wise, the fact that we're in March and I'm still in NL2, um, I don't want to be the guy that's quit every challenge he's ever said he's going to do, but this one, this one's getting to me, man. Like, just because I said I was going to do something, I don't know if I want to waste my entire year if this took us, like, six months to do NL2 challenge. Um, so, like, I'm up in the air about it, but literally I I'm, I'm feel pretty bad that we keep starting challenges and then just giving up on them. Um, it is definitely not a good look and it's not something I want to teach or really not even something I want to do for my own discipline. Like, uh, I went to NL2 for a reason because I know I needed to work on my game. But when I'm starting to add the math that even right now, if we went on a hot streak and we won our 40 buy-ins and it took us three weeks, if you add up all the hours it takes to, to get that money, like it's, uh, not really worth your time, right? Like it's pretty, pretty poor money. Um, what I've kind of learned from this challenge, without coaching or studying, I don't know if you could be a consistent winner on the Zoom tables. I think poker's got that hard. Some of you guys are obviously better, um, you know, but for me to be, be a 15 years uh, experience uh, or more in poker, yes, I haven't been just playing Zoom. I've played tournaments, I've played spin and goes, I've played heads up, I've played sit and goes, kind of done it all. Um, I don't. You know, I never would have thought to, to beat the lowest level game, you need to have uh, coaching. You know, for us to be EV, just slight winners, is pretty sad that you have to be that experienced. You know, I have played over a million, millions of hands in, in poker, so I've seen combinations and hands and stuff. And uh, to me, like, if it's that hard, like, you know, with the rake this high, like, our rake, you know, we've paid all dates. We've paid fifty-seven dollars in rake, and that that I have it set up just on Zoom right now. It's probably we did two thousand hands at uh, the cash table. I was trying to show Charlie my graph here. Let's go to all stakes. We've paid sixty dollars in the dot if you count our cash table NL two. So thirty-two thousand hands. We paid sixty dollars in rake. So. There's 30 buy-ins right there. Now, obviously, there was always going to be a rake. Uh, I think I should. I have this guy labeled a calling station, so I opened my range a little bit for that. But I probably calling station, but really tight stats too. Only 80 hands.
Um, so anyways, what I was trying to say is uh, if I was to get into the game of poker right now, I wouldn't, I, w I honestly wouldn't go towards Zoom poker. That's just me. Unless you want to invest some serious study time. Like even just Charlie's course, if it's 250 bucks, whatever he says it is. I don't know if that means like Canadian, American. Uh, I don't, I don't know what currency that, that 200, 250 bucks is. Um, but if you do want to do a course for 10 hours and have an edge, but my thing is that you're going to have a slight edge on these, like you're still going to have to grind out like on NL2 to make good profit. Say you're at like, we have to get at the calculator one time, but even if you ran like 15 big blinds per 100, you know, to make money, like how many hands do you have to play? Like a hundred thousand hands to show anything of, of profit, uh, unless you just need a bankroll to quickly move up to NL5. I guess it depends on your goals, but I have zero interest of playing like a couple hundred thousand hands or an NL2 to get a couple hundred bucks or even a thousand dollars. Like, I don't want to play like 1,000 hours for a thousand bucks. Uh, that doesn't interest me. I have a feeling that the leaks that he would tell me though, if I, if I watched his uh, master class, I don't think we'd have to play these stakes. I think we'd right away go to NL10 to NL25 as long as you have the bankroll. I think like just a couple leaks I could apply to uh, probably even NL15 and under. Once you get to NL100, it's probably uh, you'd have to learn a bit more, but I don't find it crazy different. Maybe um, a lot of people don't agree with me on that though. Now I will do a video soon that um, I've only done Zoom uh, videos for you guys in this. I've only done a couple sessions on the cash, but they weren't on video. So uh, one I thought I was recording, then I wasn't. But I will do a video to show you guys the cash. Um, most most of you guys in the channel seem to be playing cash, not Zoom. Um, I do see some of you guys out here though, but a lot of people in the comments right away recommend to play cash. Alright, we got the nuts guys against I have this guy labeled the donkey. Do you not check it? Like how do we get no money out of these? <sighs> like even that how donkeys don't triple barrel or bluff it or raise you on the river with nothing, those days seem to be over. Ace King table two. I'm finding it amazing how often my Ace King, if I decide to go all in with someone, I run into pocket aces like consistently if I have Ace King and I'm calling an all in. 
seems to be more that ace king or sorry aces or kings as opposed to like a coin flip and you think if you have ace king with the blockers you should run into pocket queens more like by the time you get to nl 100 that would happen and you run into some jacks and tens nl2 here um very rare do i find it. it's not a premium hand for 100 big blinds it is so rare for it you'll see you guys for like uh under a dollar do like ace suited and pocket pairs and you know random maces um but if for 100 big blinds i find it's, it seems majority of the times is kings plus Wow, he snap called. Hmm. Am I doing this, guys? I think so. E6. Let me get a guy to do a hero call. Nice call. Nice call, but I'm going to do this so I know not to bluff him. If you're wondering why I put him a rookie compared to a donkey, um, rookies I do more like stack sizes if they're betting two cents every time, like uh, they, they donk out. Um, donkeys I do for crazy plays and also um, very bad uh, opening range. That Jack Force suited in that spot, he shouldn't have been playing. So I, I base my tags more, in, more that if, if I have him red, it means he can have any two random cards in a, in a spot. If I have him green, means he, you know, he might know what to do a little bit, just doesn't know how to bet and might not have too much money and stuff like that. All right, guys, we got another chess here for our whopping 25 coins plus a small boost. The rake back is real. We got back one dollar right now. If we added all those coins, it'd be one dollar and rake back. Because it takes one thousand for ten dollars, so one hundred would be one dollar. I'll tell you what my gut wants to do, and I'm sticking to the challenge right now, but my gut wants to just go to NL10 and see how we do. But I told you guys I would try to make 40 buy-ins, but within my account here, uh, I just really feel like fucking going to a different stake. So NL2 guys are nitty. And the rake at NL2 is just so vicious. I don't know with certainty. Some of you guys will know more than me. You can comment. I'm getting told from comments that NL2 is the highest rake like per percentage of pot. Um, I don't know how accurate that is, but I got told that's where the highest rake is. All right, pocket jacks, can we make some money? Do we check this or bet this? I guess we check it. I guess we raise it, right? I just think if we if we just call him and then check check, uh, I'd sorry check river. I think he's gonna check it back every time. So if he did have a draw or something like that, I thought it was our best chance. Okay, Ace King, let's make some moolah. Is he gonna snap fold? 
Here we go, kings, see what I told you, ace kings happen to always run in kings races. It's remarkable, and he's a short stack. It's remarkable how many times it happens. All these uh, training videos about blockers and all this crap doesn't seem to happen on uh, NL2. Wow, do we ever try to bluff him off this? I think so. We're that guy. We have a really big stack. Some of the guys are scared with that shit. Okay, Cowboys table two. It's a pretty bad turn card, table one, but I don't know if we ever check this. Okay, we got a set. Let's just ship it here. I think I'm check raising here. Could be set versus set. Hey, yep, kings and fives. Fucking crazy, man. We are running extremely hot. We just, you know, there's a chance you could have ace king, king jack there. Could even have, you know, open end. You never know stuff, but the set versus set, um, you know, just happens a bit cooler in. Uh, So I didn't raise him on the flop, I wanted to keep his bluffs in if we were ahead. And then it already shuts it down on the on the turn, like pretty crazy.
Uh, this, this is what happens if you use your phone. You open 6, 7 suit under the gun here. I don't know how long this video is going to be, guys. Sorry. Uh, how long? Where? Where is the time here? Thirty-one minutes. I got some stuff I got to do, but I haven't done a video in a little bit. Uh, guys, for the channel though, we've passed forty-three thousand views now. I wanted to try to hit fifty thousand by the end of March, but I know I've slowed down uh, my content. Um, but I was hoping that I thought it'd be pretty cool if we hit fifty thousand. I don't know if I already start getting you guys in the comments wondering what you guys want me to do here with this NL2. Do I literally just stick to it for man of my word saying I was going to do it? Do I get back to doing uh, spinning goes and stuff? I still don't really, I'm not feeling tournaments these days, like the long tournament grinds. I know that's where a lot of our big scores came from. Um, I just, I haven't been missing them. But uh, the spinning goes, um, it's been hard not going to them and just firing up a session. Um, as most of you guys would know, I've done, I don't know what it was, 35, 40,000 spin and goes. Um, we've put in a lot of spins, so to come over here out of habit, like I keep, I keep scrolling the tables, like I'll, I'll come over here, uh, where the heck is it? Uh, $56 now? Holy, how much have we lost tonight? We got six there, oh my god guys, this is going bad. Holy crap, at one point, how is that? How many buys did we lose on this video so far? Let's go to today. What are we down today? 475. And we're actually running hotter today. We should be down more today. That never happens. Oh, did we, that one flip, but oh, then we got an ace king, just king, stuff like that. But we didn't win. Hmm. And the other day, our EVs, uh, Wow, though. yeah, look at our EV's gone right down today. $10 in EV, that's a bad day. Okay, aces. Do your magic. Tend to win the blinds. I've been limping in with my sort of connectors here a little bit more. That if I if I hit, they seem to get aggressive and get very very bet 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 bet. I'm actually just gonna I'm happy to get it in here open and flush draw. 
And if we take it down with 9 high right now, no problem. We're just going to play it aggressive. Okay, we hit it. I think we still bet. Maybe I could have bet smaller. Well, it's not the best. We bet really low and just call call uh, call an all in. Probably our best thing. If he goes all in, we're gonna call anyway. So we want some value for like Jack 10. Yeah. So if, if he doesn't have a club there, he's just gonna check it every time. We were gonna call with how much was in the middle for an all in anyways. Yeah. So if we would have checked that, he would check. So we got some money out of it. He might have even called an all in, but maybe not. Um. Well, that worked out for us. This guy's a fan, fan of the channel. What's the note on this guy? Never ever bluff him. <laughs> Duly noted. Ooh, guys, NCAA AA March Madness starts Thursday. I'm doing my bracket tonight. I'm taking Duke to win it all. When I'm done my bracket, I can show you guys who... Uh, I know a lot of you guys are from Europe and don't care about college basketball, but for us Canadian and American people, it's a pretty big deal. Best tournament in the world, just the way they run it. 64 teams go down. Winner, uh, you know, if you lose a game, you're out. So crazy, crazy amount of upsets. I think Warren Buffett offered last year $1 billion to anyone who gets a perfect bracket because, like, it's literally impossible because like, the combinations. No one's ever got a perfect bracket. I don't like uh, betting $0.08 cents here. Now I'm going to go harder because that king there, but... Okay, the sevens are out. Let's go sevens. It's not a horrible thought. 750 people have won a ticket to the Sunday Million or something like that. Wow, that's pretty, pretty crazy betting to two people twice like that. I have a feeling we have to let that go. Could sometimes get ballsy and raise them there because the two dropped, but. I don't think NL2 is going to let go of an over pair if they have that. Hope this goes check check. There's our seven. Uh, is that so obvious that we have a, a full, I mean, a full house every time? It does have some 10 nines here though. have queens with the queen of club I have this guy labeled tight guys over 308 17 hands so I'm gonna let that go Oh, I'm folding that too fast. 
All right, let's see if we can get one more big hand, and then I'm going to wrap up the video. We're getting a lot of the same cards on the same table. Man, I don't understand how we're running above EV today and still down this much. I don't even remember what hands happened. Oh, now we've lost to everything. There's a small chance we were ahead, but Ace King just got there, so. Ace Jack, nice hand. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap this up. I'm starting to play pretty loose here, getting a little tired too, so. check raising on this flop I'd like to have a spade in my hand to do that but this should hit us more than him there's our dream card guess we have to bet it try to get it so we can get it all in I have an over pair just jam a son here we go can we hold king queen Wow, that was ballsy. Alright guys, we have $11 there added to our $156, so that's real bad. We're at $167. Um, that is the bankroll. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Let me know what you think, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.